what I taught was really capturing the heart and spirit of yoga. And when you experience that, you will also know that it can, you can go in that space. How does it happen? Because in this yoga, you practice from the very beginning what you want in the end. I'm sure you don't get what I'm talking about, right? How can you do it in the beginning what you want to get in the end? How does that work? So what I call is, if you want mango tree at the end, what do you start with? Mango tree. seed. So what is the seed in the practice of yoga? What do you want at the end of the eight-limbed yoga? What is the highest? Samadhi. Ultimate is samadhi. So you start with integrative intention. That means you are practicing how to remain integrated in harmony and balance all along the way while you are doing yoga, regardless of what stage you are in. You get it? Instead, what most people practice is they want to be happy in the end. In the beginning, they don't have the seed intention for happiness. So they, might, they, they don't mind to be miserable all around the way in order to be happy at the end of the way. Isn't that crazy? Have you seen such crazy people around here? Are they around here? <laughs> because we don't mind to destroy our health peace of mind and relationships to get useless things at the end of the way. Why? Because what you get outside happens in time, but what you do to yourself happens all along the way. So this yoga is what you do to yourself is more important than what you acquire or achieve at the end of the way. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you stay there? So what I say is you practice deliberate action while you are doing yoga postures. Means you're not doing it mechanically, most people do. You're not doing it habitually, most people do. You're not doing it unconsciously, you're doing it deliberately. Means with an intention to become integrated. So even deliberate action is a preparation for integration, not at the end, but all along the way. So that what you cultivate all along the way becomes better, better, better. It doesn't happen at the long end of the way. So what you get at the end of the way can happen externally, but what happens along the way happens internally. Get this? And that is the most important part of yoga. And perhaps if we all want it, some of these things I did not have yet built in. There are new elements that I have yet. And that are because I'm continuously refining how to define it in such a way that the technique is so powerful, the explanation is so clear that anybody can easily adapt it and experience it and find the new opening in their own life, not only on a yoga mat. What's good is it that we are flexible on a yoga mat and stiff in life, psychologically, emotionally, habitually. So this is how to cultivate flexibility, not only in the physical body, but also adaptability under all circumstances, experiences, and interactions with life. That has some meaning. Like if you are flexible, that's what I say. There are many flexible, miserable people. <laughs> And that has nothing to do with yoga. I mean, it is good as a side benefit or secondary outcome of the primary purpose of yoga, but not as a primary purpose. You see, also about losing weight or even health, because if you do not work with your unconscious, the chronic stress patterns that live in your unconscious will make you miserable and unhealthy even after you get healthy by working on a physical level. So this yoga is how to solve problems from the core. So most people, just like in medicine, almost every medicine you use is treating the symptoms. Have you noticed that? That's why people are less and less interested in conventional medical 
solutions because I would use it too as a temporary measure. But if I want to make a real change, I have to change from the source. The cause I have to change, not the effect. So this yoga is how to change the cause that creates stress so, and conflict in your life. That cannot be eliminated no matter how hard you work on a yoga mat or on a sport or a, on a, it doesn't matter because you have to work out your unconscious part. So how to work out unconscious? What is the manner in which unconscious is surfacing? If I ask you a question, how many times in a day you react to situation, to people, to external conditions that you encounter in the day? How many times? You feel irritable, a little bit frustrated, a little bit complaining, a little bit resisting. How many days? How many times? <laughs> Ten times? <laughs> Almost every time. So that means, that means you are living unconsciously. That reaction is coming from your pre-programmed, unresolved past, we call karma. That's the meaning of karma. Karma means you stand, you live some experience, where you saw the problem came from other or outside of you. But you didn't see the real source of problem that you are. When you see the problem coming from where it is not, it remains unresolved. What does that mean, you saw the problem where, where it is not? You know what I'm talking about? You Every time any problem that you see to be coming from outside doesn't come you as it is coming, it comes through your reaction. Therefore, it is your problem. Your reactive perception is what revealed to you, revealed it to be the problem. So, it was not the problem. You were your own problem because you saw it through your reaction. You saw it, filtered it through your expectation. Therefore, it appeared to be coming outside, but it came to you, through you, therefore it is your problem. How to dismantle that reaction is what I practice, what I have built into the practice of yoga. When you are doing yoga postures, how many times you get reactions? How many times you say, oh my God, this is a mistake. I don't think I'm doing it right. Maybe I should go to a different class. I'm, I wish I had started early. Oh, I think I'm too fat. <laughs> and so-and-so is doing better than me. What is that? That means you're not practicing yoga, you're practicing conflict, but calling it yoga. <laughs> this is what it is. It's not yoga. It's called conflict. So how to practice integrative intention and so that, then how do you do that? you have to learn how to disengage from your thinking center and how to enter your feeling center, your body, your sensations, and your heart. So when you get off your mind, you enter your body, you're not fighting with your body because you're parking your mind in your body. So it doesn't create any nuisance. All problems come from reaction. Body doesn't react, mind reacts. So we, we, I have built some of these techniques so people learn how to dismantle reaction. So reaction will come, but your interact, your um, act, your intention, your integrative intention acts like a biofeedback, and it says, "Sir, you're getting off the tracks." <laughs> biofeedback. Why? Because you're just messing up your intention. Get back on. Don't play with your mind. Don't judge your performance. Don't compare it. Don't feel frustrated. And then you come back from the non-mental state of being. You get it? When you come into non-mental, look at this. Patanjali says one sentence that describes yoga. Yoga, chitta, vritti, nirodha. Yoga means stopping modifications of mind. Right? That is what you get into. Like this. 